In this video, we are going to learn about the pricing of money market instruments. The overall objective of the module is as follows. We'll be starting to describe the money markets and its relation with the capital market. Then we'll be specifically focusing on the nature and the use of key money market instruments by understanding their characteristics. And this will be the key objective in this video. Then we switch to calculating the price and returns of the instruments which we would have studied and recognizing the role of money markets in the global financial crisis that occurred in 2008. Then we try to identify the market conventions which are on quoted yields and prices. In order to understand the fundamental role played by the financial assets like the money market instruments in the modern economies, let us first of all try to understand the complexity of economic activity which is there for any economy or overall in the financial system. So millions of households and firms interact in a decentralized way as shown in this figure that there are agents like firms, households, government, then the rest of the world which are interacting and the productive process which involves the use of machinery, buildings and other real estate assets etc they generate an infinite number of transactions among firms and between firms and household and it can be between government and rest of the world as well. So these real assets and transactions have a mirror image in the financial world. Now that mirror image is what we term as financial assets. So they translate into financial assets and what they do is they convey the ownership over the physical assets like goods or services and financial assets they facilitate the ownership and the exchange of goods as well and also they allow the agents in the economy it can be an investor or a common household to disconnect their stream of revenues from payments related to consumption and investment decisions what additionally they do is that they allow firms businesses or households as well as the governments to save part of revenues to pay for the future consumption or investment Another key role which they play is in terms of facilitating the borrowing to the agents, be it to a business entity or to a consumer, but with the promise to repay in the future. Now, they also allow for the transfer of risk over time between the parties. We'll come across different instruments in which we'll be getting to know that how risk mitigation or risk hedging is there. Then the financial engineering also allows the management of pricing risks and the transfer of risks as well. And they bring together now these markets or these instruments which are working in the financial system uh, by different financial institutions. They bring together the investors, borrowers and facilitate trade of financial assets like stocks, bonds and commodities. Now let's try to understand these financial assets one by one. Based on the time horizon of instruments being traded in the financial markets, we have two broad classifications of the markets that is money markets and the capital markets or the secondary markets. Now let me elaborate on them one by one. So in case of money markets, what we generally refer to is the short term instruments. The focus here is on instruments which have a maturity less than one year and we are focusing solely on the short term instruments here. Now, on the contrary, in case of capital markets, we have long term instruments being traded in the market with the maturity, which is going to be more than one year. For example, stocks and the bond markets, which are the most widely explored uh, markets by the investors or preferred markets by the investors. Now, they are tapped generally with the objective for long term purpose by industrial corporations etc and another objective which can be there is for the debt issuance by the federal and the local governments in the bond markets let us now shift our focus to money market instruments in which we'll be discussing treasury bills repurchase agreements certificate of deposits commercial papers asset backed securities, 
and the banker's acceptances. The first instrument which we are going to discuss is the treasury bills. Now these are the IOUs which are issued by the government with an objective to raise money in short term from the public. The key characteristic which makes them very lucrative for the investors or the stakeholders is the simplicity and the safety of these instruments. They have a maturity less than one year and are available with varying maturity periods like 14 days, 91 days, 182 days or 364 days. In India, the minimum amount is rupees 25,000 and in multiples of 25,000 they are available. While in case of US, it's available between the band of $1,000 to $1 million. Now, the lower denominations of these bills, as you can observe, what they offer is that it makes them accessible to individual investors also, right? And a contract with a face value is there in case of these instruments. What do we mean by face value? Is a value that is promised to be paid on maturity. For example, in the figure or in the picture, you can see it's a hundred thousand dollar treasury bill. So the bill holder, okay, the one who is having this uh, instrument in hand, he 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 gets uh, a face value of one thousand dollar assured when it's going to be exchanged in the market. Now the difference between the price that we as an investor have paid today on this bill okay and the face value will be the return that differential is going to be the return between the price and the face value right another key characteristic of these instruments is that they have no coupons that is there are zero coupon bonds now for long-term bonds there is an interest associated with them they come with a cost attached to them right for example, when we talk about long term bonds, typically they have some tabs attached or at least they did that in the past that establishes some payments, some interest payments uh, that are going to be paid, right? But this is not the case with the T-bills. Treasury bills are the most marketable money market instruments because of the government issuance. The returns on the T-bills are also exempted from taxes, which is again an added advantage. But one should note that they do not offer very high returns as compared to other instruments. Primarily, they offer more liquidity and are extraordinarily safe. Let us now shift our focus to understand what are repurchase agreements or repos. Repo agreements are a sort of loan contract that is backed by some collateral like when we approach a bank for a home loan or a automobile loan. So we have to show them some collateral right in case we are defaulting so they can claim that asset or that collateral which we are promising to the bank. Likewise, imagine uh, loan contracts which are backed by collateral such as the car loans when you purchase a car using financing from a bank or from the dealer, the lender maintains a lien over the car and they take this in their agreement. I mean, when you are borrowing uh, from the bank, so uh, the conditions, uh, they, they provide the flexibility to the lender that they, they can retake your car if you fail to repay the loan as agreed. Likewise, in case of repos, what happens is that it's a loan contract that is collateralized. However, in this case, the property of the asset is actually transferred from the borrower to the lender. So the lender, if you think from the lender's perspective, it implies lower risk. You already have the collateral with you in case the one who took or borrowed from you, in case he or she defaults, so you can claim their asset right so how does this play in practice if you can observe from this figure the borrower sells the collateral to the lender with a promise to repurchase the collateral at a given date at a given price the difference between this initial selling price and the future repurchase price 
is that the future price would include some interest so for example if you borrowed 80 rupees or 80 dollars of cash with the promise okay that you will be repaying but now you are giving your collateral also as an asset asset collateral right 80 dollar cash borrowed plus 20 is say for example the interest rate so 100 dollar worth of asset collateral is going to be there with the lender and what happens is that the difference between this initial selling price and the future repurchase price is that the future price would include some interest as a consequence it's 100 so also say that this transaction this there is a transfer of cash from lender to the borrower at the beginning of the repo that is 80 dollars here and a matching transaction of cash at the end of the repo life right so this is about the repo instruments how they work the next instrument is the certificate of deposits now these are the time deposit with banks which are issued by the banks and the financial institutions and traded primarily in the secondary markets and most importantly one of the key underlying characteristic of these instrument is that they are denominated in dematerialized form that is they are digitally available also they are covered by deposit insurance up to a certain amount and typically they have a maturity period between three months to five years in terms of the security they are very secure they offer higher interest rate as compared to the normal savings account in a bank so that makes them very lucrative now in terms of the payout they provide you flexibility okay and the tenure as well as for the amount now there are no associated charges with these instruments and one should note that money is tied up for the length of the certificate of deposits unless you are willing to sell it before the date of maturity the cps or the commercial papers now for private corporate sector or the corporations borrowing short term is a costly affair specifically from banks if firms are going to borrow so the interest rate which is going to be there for short term borrowing it's going to be very high now to avoid this scenario commercial paper come up into picture as an alternative now how it works imagine a firm f which is selling cars to consumer c now in return what happens the consumer gives cash and receivables and simultaneously we have investors who are willing to invest in the short term paper market as a consequence the firm f can issue commercial paper which is not backed by any asset in return for some cash and use that financing to pay for inventories and other short term cost which it wants to spend on now there will be an interest rate which is involved here but relatively as compared to the banks it's going to be cheaper so it's cheaper for the firm to finance via commercial papers as an instrument now banks and financial companies also use commercial papers extensively one should note that the main characteristic of the commercial paper is the lack of collateral which implies that it is simply based on the trust factor on the name of the firm f here so in that way it's a risky instrument as well because uh, trust is the only underlying feature here what are asset backed securities or asset backed commercial papers now as an alternative to the commercial papers in terms of tracking the potential risk which is associated with the commercial paper asset backed securities come into picture how it works now again take the similar example of commercial paper market there is a firm f which is selling cars to the consumer c in return he gives cash and receivables what happens simultaneously is that there are investors who are willing to purchase to finance its operations now for this there is an intermediary company to facilitate this process which are known as spvs or the special purpose vehicles now what spv is these are paper companies where the manufacturer in this example for uh, for instance its firm f the company need for the cash places the receivables transfer the receivables to allow for special purpose vehicle 
to use that pool of assets as collateral as a backup. So here is how the risk is being taken into account. Now the SPV, what it does is that it issues securities to the investors. That is asset backed securities depending on the kind of collateral like mortgage, etc. So the difference between asset backed securities and the commercial papers which, papers, which we have discussed in the previous example is the SPV, which come into picture. That is a pool of safe assets, uh, which are there, which serve as a collateral in case of asset backed securities. Our next instrument is the bankers acceptances. Now this instrument is very important as far as the financing of commercial trade is concerned and primarily in order to reduce the risk in terms of settling a transaction in trade, uh, this instrument plays a very important role. How it works, we'll discuss in detail, but broadly what happens is that through these instruments, banks accepts the ultimate responsibility to repay a loan. Now how it works? Let us consider four companies which are interacting, two in USA which are importing a particular product and two in India who are exporting a product. Now operations are, say for instance, India is exporting 500 gems to a company in US and US importer pays a price for those gems, okay? And uh, let us assume that to be 1 million. Now further, they agree that 200 more gems will be sent in next 60 days at some bounded horizon after receiving the payment. Now such transaction definitely involves huge counterparty risk. If one of the, either of the party is not uh, complying with the terms, it, it's a huge risk, right? To ameliorate the counterparty risk which is involved in this transaction between two countries, what happens that two more institutions enter into the picture? That is the bank from a US and the bank from India. Now the US importer, it negotiates with its bank on the issuance of letter of trade and the letter of credit. And once they negotiate that, the US bank informs its correspondent that is in India, the bank which is there in India, the Indian bank with the issuance of letter of credit. Now the Indian bank informs to the Indian company of the receipt of this letter of credit. So Indian exporter is now sure to send the gems. Indian firm presents the shipping documents to the Indian bank, which forwards them to US bank. Now the US bank stamps accepted on the letter of credit. Now this security can be traded in secondary market and is backed by the US bank. Now the Indian bank could keep this letter until maturity and then present the letter to the US bank for settling the transaction for payment or he could ask the US bank to get the letter and the cash, the letter with the US bank. Okay. And then more generally what happens in this entire process, which is being facilitated by this instrument is that this letter can be sold as well and traded in the secondary market. So this makes this instrument quite significant as far as the commercial financing is concerned. If you like the content of our videos, you can support our channel by subscribing to it and also following us on the social media platforms. Have a great day.